Okay. A couple of chapters ago, we know Gauss's law, this is the divergence theorem, and how that applies to an infinite sheet of charge. Uh, just to review real quickly, tell you if you've got an infinite sheet of charge here, and this is just part of it, if you take some area on the surface, charge is sigma A. If you uh, take this into the cylinder of any length, doesn't matter. And you have the other side of the cylinder over here. Then Plus is four pi k sigma a, and the flux all comes out of the ends because of the symmetry of an infinite sheet. The charge can't, it has to be. I mean, the electric field has to be perpendicular to the surface. Now, I'm not going over that detail. You have to understand the symmetry argument and so forth. The flux exits through area 2A. So electric field equals your flux. I'll apply some B because I think that's what you would have done over your area 2A and capital A, which is 4 pi A sigma A over 2A. Which is 2 pi k sigma. And I put q up here because that goes with 4 pi k. And so we what I'm thinking how I wrote it. I'll q that sigma. You know, with charge Q on an infinite sheet is infinite. Obviously, it's not Q, but you can confine your attention to any area here. It doesn't have to be circular, it could be irregular, it doesn't matter, as long as you have a cylinder whose cross section is equal to whatever region you want to talk about. It could be a square, a rectangle, could be an ellipse, could be just irregular as hell. Okay, so anyhow, we have that, all that. There's your electric field. Okay, now, if we apply a voltage across two infinite sheets, so that looking at them on, from the side, like looking at the uh, capacitor that I used to generate this, and I might as well do that. On the screen or on the, on the video. So here I've got two plates. Now these things are quite infinite. Okay, these two plates are not infinite, but uh, we'll see how we deal with that fact. I can crank this thing and get 13 volts across it. Okay. Now, if these are close enough, then for any point, it's not close to the edge, these might as well be in and do the integrals and see if that's the case. So if these are close enough to act like infinite plates, except near the edges maybe, uh, and we charge this one with positive charges, And of course, there's a middle place the charge distributes itself equally on both sides. And negative charges here.
Then we have, and, and, and actually the rest. Second class after we come back, we're not going to be under a mask mandate anymore. And be happy to get rid of the mask, except we're in one of the uh, lowest areas of lowest compliance in the country with masks and vaccinations, and it's premature here. I'm not happy about that, but with the pandemic moving into an epidemic stage. People aren't going to cooperate anymore. So I think the governor's jumping the gun on that one just a little bit. For most of Virginia, it's an appropriate decision. I don't think it should apply to anybody for at least a couple more weeks after that, but so be it. Uh, okay, so I, 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 I don't, you know, I disagree respectfully because he's doing a lot of good things. So. Okay, so here we have this situation. Well, in this situation, you have an electric field. An electric field that comes off of this plate in both directions. I was about to say, I'd be, in one way, I'll be glad to get rid of the mask so I can see things. But uh, uh, so we have electric field coming off the positive plate, and we have an electric field that goes toward the negative plate. Okay, now what we're seeing is again, just illustrated, I'm going to take the blue off. I'm going to put this place a little further apart. If this is positively charged, we have an electric field coming off of this one in this direction and also in this direction. Okay, in other words, pointing away from the plate. And we have an electric field pointing toward this one okay, because. A positive test charge would be attracted to this one, so the electric field goes that way, repelled from this one. So between the plates, the electric field goes this way. Well, we can see that the electric fields are in the same direction between the plates, okay, away from this and toward this. Outside the plates, they're in opposite directions. So what we end up with is essentially no electric field outside the plates or very little. And between the plates, except near the edges, a constant electric field. So we have a field up here. Purple field is Q pi K sigma, and the green field, not just call it a e, e, is Q pi K sigma. Between the plates, those two pi K sigmas are in the same direction, so they add up to a four pi K sigma. Equals four pi K sigma. Now, if the separate, and I, I, I'll, I'll also illustrate as you look at it, uh, up toward the edges, these fields kind of go like this. And like this. So they get weaker and they also kind of 
about. You've seen the illustrations this morning. I'm not drawing field lines, and I'm not going to draw the field lines. But you can, you, you, you'll see the illustrations that show you the field lines, and they kind of aren't quite straight up near the edge. Okay. If the plates are very close together, almost every point on the plates is much closer to the plate than it is to the edge, so that the field is going to be pretty much perpendicular to the plate. Okay. So you want to think about that a little bit. It comes down to this. You have this electric field. Now, if you have a distance here, which I don't remember what your book uses for the symbol there, but let's just say that like the, the separation is A. This implies that the potential difference between the plates, and I'm not going to put a subscript in that, we understand that this is a potential difference between the plates, is equal to the distance between the plates times the electric field, which is U pi K sigma. A, and it's four part K sigma, two part K sigma. They do that. That's a voltage between the plates. Now we just completed. A chapter on potential, so it ought to be second nature to you that the voltage is the product of the distance in the electric field. We want to deal with that to some extent in class last time, and we did the homework. I haven't checked uh, to see how much of it we got done. Um, normally, I do. I need to get some tests in the test center today, and that turned out to be a consuming task. So I, 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 I didn't get to look, but I'm assuming we've got you know, a significant amount of homework done or all of it, hopefully. Um, then this ought to be obvious, okay? It's not obvious, you need to understand potential a little bit. And potential is the work per unit of charge. The electric field is a force per unit of charge, okay? Um, and you multiply that, by the distance that you move, and you get the four times distance, you get the work per unit charge. Okay? Very simple connection, and the units work out nicely and help you think about what you're looking at. So, anyhow, we have that. We want to be sure we understand that. Okay, let's just take this example. Now, let's say my two plates. Uh, let's say the plates are two millimeters apart. <coughs> and B equals 10 volts. What's the electric field? There are two ways you can answer that. One way is by using this. <coughs> Another way is by just thinking about what electric field means and what volts mean. So I'm going to play it in two ways, but go ahead and uh, work it out. Okay, so just intuitively, the 
Ten volts over two millimeters, right? Because again, intuitively, use force per unit charge. Your potential difference is work per unit of charge, so that your voltage is the force per unit charge times your displacement. Because you get the force times displacement by the volume of the charge. Okay. Well, then that equals. Ten volts, which is ten joules per coulomb, or ten newton meters per coulomb. You got to be able to reason out why it's one and the other, or the other. Over one zero zero two meters, because millimeters isn't going to articulate with meters here in a way that helps you take the rule. And you got five thousand. For Coulomb. So who would have thought that this little generator it only produces 10 volts, not even enough to shock you. Maybe if you put the lead across your tongue. Okay. Yeah, I think those claps would be impossible. Okay. But um, you might get a little bit of a tingle out of it. But who knows that that little bit of electric field less than you know, about the uh, that's not much different than a nine volt battery, right? Okay. It's gonna give you across that capacitor, like those two little plates, 5,000 newtons per coulomb. Seems like a big number, okay? But generally when you're doing electric fields, you're dealing with these things, thousands of newtons per coulomb, thousands of, you know, even with low voltage, okay. Now, if these things were further apart, they are two centimeters apart, and that's not very far, then, well, you're getting to the point where some points near the edge are quite a bit, uh, or some point, yeah, near the edge are aren't facing a perpendicular field, perpendicular field. Uh, so you're getting a little bit of an edge effect there. You can read about that a little bit more. The material is covered. Um, if it was two centimeters instead of two millimeters, then it would be 500 newtons per coulomb. Okay. So the closer the plates get together, the bigger electric field. Because your electric field, you divide your voltage by your displacement. I think it'd be electric field for given voltage. Now, if I use the wind source generator, I get sparks about that long, it gives me tens of thousands of volts. Okay. So let's say if If V is 80,000 volts and you still have that two millimeter separation, what electric field do you have in that? Just think it through. Okay, it's easy to see what this would be just comparing with what we did up here. You divide your voltage by two. Then you multiply by a thousand because you're dividing millimeters into meters, right? Okay, or you can, you know, you can divide by 0 0.002. Look at that any way you want. But you get forty million volts. 
about 40 million units per coulomb. Okay. So we can easily do that in the lab. Except that an electric field that strong is going to tend to spark. It's going to tend to ionize the air, give you, give you an ion channel, or it might. Okay. That turns out we really can't do that here because charge kind of leaks with this apparatus. So we can't really achieve quite that many, but we can still achieve more, maybe 10 million. Okay. When the thing is producing, the web search generator producing sparks that long, uh, depending on the atmospheric conditions and so forth, you could, well, have 80,000 volts. Uh, Difficult to produce 80,000 volts. So, if you're feeding cross floor, you can produce 10,000 volts. That's it going on. Then you get a little, little spot. Okay. <coughs> well, anyhow, there, there we have it. Um, So my next question is, how much charge do we have in this capacitor, please? Well, now we can kind of look at this equation. We want to think through why it works because we want to think all the way through to God's law, but we'll kind of shortcut that and just use this as a formula for the moment. It's four pi k sigma times a is your voltage, right? Or just four pi k sigma is your electric field. If we know the electric field, we can figure sigma. If we know the voltage, we can the separation, we can figure sigma. Okay. So work that out. Tell me how much charge, how many coulombs of charge we would have on these, uh, with the fact that these plates are circular with a radius of 10 centimeters. Now I'll just tell you, circular plates 10 centimeters. You do pi r squared, right? It's a tenth of a meter squared, giving you a hundredth of a square meter times pi. So you get about 0 0.03 square meters, okay? So if the plate area equals 0 0.03 square meters, Question. I said we can use this or this. Actually, we've got to come back to this. Or we can use this to find sigma. Knowing sigma and the area, we can find the charge, right? Okay, so this way or this way, we can find sigma. We can use the voltage to find. The charge density, we can use the electric field to find the charge density. So, what's the charge density? Okay, so the question was again if the area of the plate is 0 0.03 square meters, and it's like, you know, officially 0.0314 uh, and, and even more. Uh, but the 0 0.03, because of the edge effect, might be closer than uh, the 0 0.0314 would be. So, anyhow, ballpark number of square meters. What we're after really is how much charge is on those plates, approximately 10 volts. 
and do this do it as accurately as you want. Well, we understand, I hope, why delta B is four pi k sigma times a. So all I have to do is divide delta B by four pi k a. Well, that's about 10 volts. Four pi k is four pi times nine times 10 to the ninth meter squared per coulomb. And I don't have to read the right that all out. So that's what I read and write out all the units there. Too much here anyway. Okay. So this is approximately equal to 10 volts, which is 10. Newton meters per coulomb divided by four pi k. Now four pi is 12 and a half ballpark. Okay. So we multiply that by nine and we get about 113. Okay, times 10 to the ninth. Well then that would be like 10 to the 11th. Okay, pretty close to 10 to the 11th. Okay, and that's Newton squared. That's Newton squared. And A was 0.02 meters. So this becomes like two times 10 to the ninth Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Two times 10 to the ninth into 10, which is going to give me 5 times 10 to the negative 8. This meter, we'll divide this meter, the Coulomb squared will go into this, and it's going to give you, and then we'll divide out, it's going to give you Coulomb per meter squared, which you got, okay? So is that about what you got? Okay. Now, it's going to be a little bit less than that because this is a little more than 10 to the 11. It's like 1.13 times 10 to the 11. So it's about 13%, ballpark 13%. Low, if you take 13% off of that, you're going to divide like that. You're going to get 4.3. Something like that. Okay. Is that pretty close? Yeah. Okay. Now that's just numbers. This is just symbols. But sometimes you got to go to symbols. If you understand where all this came from, then you have confidence in this. The units work out, you have even more confidence. Okay, well, this is about 50 nano coulombs. So let's just do this in nanocoulombs because that's a more manageable number. It's a number we can visualize, okay? So how much total charge do we have then? On this plate. So If we multiply the density in newtons per square meter by the area in square meters without doing, you know, doing it with using a little common sense rather than just mindlessly applying the formula, which gives us much more insight. If we got an area of 0 0.04, 0 0.03 millimeters times 50 nanocoulombs per square meter, we 
1.5 nanocoulombs. Okay. Now, actually, you're 13% high here, so it comes out like 1.3 approximately. Uh, so, Write the word accurate completely because we ran out of room. But more accurate to say 1.3 nanocoulombs, but just try to get a feel for how much charge you have. Okay. Now, just continuing to get a little feel for what's going on here. If you have and I'll use the 1.5, it's an easy number to work with. Yeah, 1.5 nanocoulombs. Charges. What would be the force? Well, I'll work that out for it. Just you know, Coulomb's law. If you multiply 1.5 nanocoulombs by 1.5 nanocoulombs, okay, and one of these will be negative. Because one's positive, one's negative, right? I mean, you're separating charge on the capacitor. So you get this divided by uh, 0.002 meters quantity squared is, well, let's say four times and the negative six meters squared, it's going to come out a pretty small force on the order of millinews or it's a hundred of a newton. Uh, you would get a force here of uh, ballpark. You're going to have like that's almost 10 to the 10th. Okay, and this is 10 to the negative 12, right? And you divide this by two, so you get like five times ten to the third newtons or five millinewtons. Okay. So if these were point charges, they have a small but measurable force. You can actually feel a force, a millinewton. Okay. Uh, I just barely touch my forehead. I'm probably down in the Fraction of the Newton. Um, the Newton's a mass of an apple. Divide that apple into 100 pieces. Okay. Those pieces are perfectly visible. You can taste them. You can feel them. That'd be a really Newton force. Uh, you know, the, the, the pieces would be. Couple of millimeters in the side. That, that work it out on the order of you know, two, three millimeters, possibly something that uh, the order of magnitude. Okay, just to visualize a millimeter. It's not a totally insignificant force, but it's not going to slap those plates together. Okay. Uh, so again, just kind of investigating the various things that go in to the idea of a parallel plate capacitor. Okay, capacitance is defined as the charge per volt. Okay, for this capacitor, 
we found that the charge is 1.5 nanocoulombs and the voltage is 10 volts. So we get 1.5 nanocoulombs over 10 volts. Let's work out the units. One point five nanocoulombs over ten volts, ten joules per coulomb. Outstanding experimentalist with incredible intuition. 
That's interesting. Guy to read about sometimes. But anyhow, we have energy and capacitor. Now we want to go to energy. So let's say we have. Capacity sink, capacity sink, again to distinguish from the Coulomb, and the charge sink. That implies that your voltage is two times the capacitor. Question, how much work does it take to transfer charge delta Q? We got it. Okay, good. Okay, well, reasoning it out, just think about what voltage means. It's the amount of work per unit of charge. Delta Q is your number of units of charge. So if you multiply delta Q times your voltage, you get the work, right? And I'll say work contribution because we're going to talk about how much work it takes to charge this thing. Okay. Okay, delta W then equals delta Q times V, right? And that we could write as. QC delta Q. I say that the sum of your work contributions you move one tiny charge delta Q at a time. You start at charge Q naught, and the work you do then for that first delta Q is going to be QC, well, Q naught C times delta Q, right? The next one, it's going to be Q plus Q naught times C delta Q. In other words, this charge keeps increasing. And you can read about it in the book, but from everything we've done, partitioning intervals and so forth, it should be. Easy enough for you to relate this to the fact that this is just going to approach the interval from Q naught to Q out of QC to Q. And that's going to be Q squared over 2 times the capacitance. Evaluated between Q naught and Q L.
It's a very simple integral. Integral integrate QC with respect to Q from Q naught to QF to get this. And of course, the total energy is what you get if you charge it from zero. So relative to Q naught equals zero, the charge is Q squared C over two. Sorry, energy is Q squared C over two. A book will make the rest of that clear. But that's how we get the energy to the capacitor. Capacitor here, one pair, one coulomb per volt. I hook up this generator, and unlike the capacitor plates where I stored very little energy, I can charge this thing up. Charging it about maybe three volts. It's easier and easier to charge because the capacitor charge is opposite. And the path of the voltage is opposite to the voltage produced by the generator. We'll talk about that in a while. Okay. That's not really easy. So I'm figuring that the charge in this capacitor is pretty much equal and opposite. I'm not about to charge the voltage in the capacitor, it's pretty much equal and opposite to the voltage of the generator. How much energy then does the capacitor have? It's got Three volts of charge. It's got a charge then of about three coulombs because it's one coulomb per volt, one pair. And we can calculate two squared over two squared C over two. Take the graph, the energy in this thing. We put that energy will come back and run this thing for a while. Okay. And there's friction and so forth. So that's how well we can see that. Uh, an important idea that we're going to deal with in lab. Okay. And more things about capacity. And let me zoom this back so it can all be read because I'm trying to focus the thing. Yeah, there's some focus. Okay, so we got a good focus there. There's there's what we've done. 